Hey everyone, this is Robin from Design Hill and your host for today. I hope you and your family are keeping well and safe. I would like to welcome you for this session where we are going to talk about the art of leadership. Today's event is brought to you by Design Hill, world's leading creative marketplace that caters to the creative needs of businesses and individuals alike who can source high quality designs from professional designers and by unique products created by independent artists. So moving ahead guys, let me introduce our speaker for today. We have with us Sara, Sara Audrizio. Sara is a passionate trainer and facilitator devoted to long lasting and fast results for every client. She is inspired by seeing people learn, develop and perform at a totally new level. That's why she created Odo's training. She specializes in the hospitality sector and for over a decade, she has worked in luxury environments like five star hotels and Michelin star restaurants across Europe, helping them in increase revenue and improve customer satisfaction. By applying her direct experience, she now helps organizations inspire and retain their staff, increase the number of loyal, loyal customers and referrals reduce the number of complaints and achieve true customer care excellence. So Sara, welcome you on board. So would you like to say a quick hi to our audience? Hi, thank you very much, Robin. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, I just wanted to say hi to everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, I can see people tuning in from everywhere. So I've seen Italy, Netherlands, uh, and then Paris, very good, and somebody from North Macedonia. So I'm very, very happy uh, to see people from all over the world. Oh, I've got India too. So it's great to have everyone here today. Um, thank you for the introduction. So I just wanted to say, had a couple of words uh, and say thank you for organizing this event. Uh, but also every, thanks to everyone that is participating. Um, and if you're joining in live, feel free to put questions in the chat. I'll read them as I go, uh, but we'll also have a Q&A in the end. Um, and also, if you are watching the recorded video, it's fine anyway. Uh, ask me for your questions via uh, email or contact me on LinkedIn. And I can hear a little bit of an echo right now. So let me know if you hear an echo as well or if the sound is all good on your side. Great. So before we start, start the session, guys, here's a big announcement. We are giving away certificates to all the attendees, but for that, you would have to stick till the very end. So brace yourself and stay tuned till the end. All right, so before we start the session, guys, let's Need to get your look parents at what off Design Hill is Head all to the about. world's number one creative marketplace, Design Hill. When I started my photography business, I needed something that said, this was more than just a hobby. It's not a hobby, mom. That's why I went to Design Hill and got an amazing logo, super fast, at a price I could afford. The process was easy using Design Hill's logo maker. Just enter the name of your business, then pick out a number of designs that inspire you. I'll pick this one and that, that one looks cute. Then pick your colors or let the system decide. Add some more info like a slogan, the industry your business is in, and your budget. The logo maker, using machine learning and artificial intelligence, will design thousands of logo variants that you can choose from and adapt. In fact, I was able to get everything from business cards to t-shirt design and complete social media kit, all with the click of a button. With that, I am all set. Now everyone I meet knows I'm a legit photographer. Even my mom. It's real. Let's decaf. Let the world know it's real and build your brand Let the with world Design Hill. Let and build your brand with Design Hill. All right, guys. So that was all about Design Hill. And now we are all set to start the session. We will take up questions during the session. So, guys, if you have anything to ask to Sarah, Please drop your questions in the questions section on your screen. Over to you, Sarah. You can start presenting your screen. Thank you very much, Robin. Uh, I saw in the chat that somebody can hear a little bit of an echo. 
Uh, let's see what everybody else say. Can you hear the echo on your side, Robin? From my end, it's all it's fine. I'm not so hearing good. any okay. echo. Let's so guys, if you are facing this problem of echo, so mm -hmm. maybe you can try logging out and log in again. Oh, I can do that. Oh, let's see. I'll be right back then. Should be better now. Yeah, I think it's much better. So let me share my screen and I'll start with the presentation. Perfect. Thank you very much for bearing with me, guys. Let me start sharing my screen. So you should be able to see my presentation. So perfect. Thank you very much again, guys. So uh, Robin introduced myself very well. Uh, I just wanted to add a couple of things uh, to my introduction. So just wanted to say that I uh, deliver training courses, as Robin said, I'm also a coach and I do this face to face or online so I can really help you out and support you wherever you are. So let's start with today's topic, the art of leadership. So I think we all experience great leadership in our life. But if I ask you to think of a great leader, who comes to your mind? I don't want you to answer this question. Just think. If I ask you, think of a great leader. It can be um, an historical figure. It can be a manager that you had at work, or it can be um, like a parent, a relative, a friend. Just think of a great leader for you. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to think. And I'm sure that somebody will start popping in your mind right now. But what if I ask you to think what makes them a great leader? I think that this is a bit more challenging to answer a bit a more challenging question to answer is because as i said even if we all experience leadership in our lives we rarely stop and think what makes these people that i admire a leader so what distinguishes them from other people that's you know something that we never do so i'd like you to uh, answer this question then what do you think is the role of a leader what does it mean being a leader? I want you to pop that in the chat and I'll stop sharing actually for a second so I can have a look at the chat. So I can see somebody wrote inspire with example. I like that. Somebody that motivates. Mm -hmm. Where else? And this is, there is no right and wrong answer. It's just what you think is leadership to you. Okay, so I can see somebody wrote listening and mentorship. I like that. Having integrity, taking action, having assertive behavior. Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote a role model. I like that. So somebody that gives direction as well. I like all of your answers. So let me just put this back. So for who is tuning in now, the question was, what makes a great leader? And all of your answers are right. So this is the agenda for today. And this is what we will look at today. Leadership, vision, and people. The second point will be pragmatic leadership. The third point we'll talk about is the importance of explaining why. And the fourth and last point will be leadership behavior and its impact. So for who is tuning in just now, we are talking about what is a leader. So let's put the definition up on the screen. And all of the comments from you were all right, because we all have a different idea of what a leader should be to us. But this is the, uh, let's say, a common definition. And a leader 
is an individual that has the ability to influence, guide, and lead other individuals, teams, or organizations. So all of the things that you said are coming together in this um, definition of a leader, of the role of a leader. Um, so there are many, many areas that are part of leadership. But a leader, especially a good leader, has to focus on two key areas to make sure that uh, he or she is a successful leader. Let's have a look at what they are, which is going to be the first point of today's agenda. Vision and people. Let's start with the first one, vision. So vision is really, really important. You can have all the leadership skills you want. You can be a very good leader, um, a great boss, but if you don't have a vision for your company, for your department, you're going nowhere or nowhere fast. So you need to start with having a vision in mind. You need to cast a vision to start with. And there are many different questions that um, you can ask yourself to make sure that the vision is good for your company, good for your department. Um, but I will put here a couple of questions to help you out with your vision. So the first one is, where is your company? Where is your department going? Where would you like your company or your department to go or to be? Um, and this is what sets leaders apart from other people imagining having this vision of where you and your team and your company want to be in the next two years, five years, 10 years, or even 15, 20 years. So having an idea of where you want to go really sets you apart as a leader from other people. And then the second question that can help you out is what are the goals to achieve? So where is your company going? What goals are you trying to achieve or would you like to achieve? Now, your job doesn't stop here. As you might imagine, it's not enough to just have a vision. It, it's great to have the big idea, but just thinking of how you want your future to be is not enough. To be a good leader, you need to be able to communicate this to your team, to your people. Um, and there are just, uh, I mean, there are, again, many things that you can do to communicate this to your team. I will put here a couple of questions to help you out. But it's not just about communicating. Your team also will have to understand the vision. What are you trying to do? But also embrace it and take action to help you achieve that vision. So a couple of questions here to help you out. Think of, does your staff know? Are they aware of your vision? Of what are you imagining is the future of your company or your department? So does your staff know what are you trying to do? And the second question is, are they involved? So is your staff involved in, let's say, decision-making, for instance, in deciding how, as a team, as a group of people, are you going to achieve these all together? Now, we spoke about vision a little bit. The second element, the second key aspect of leadership is, well, are the people. Because you have a vision, it's great, you have your big idea about the future, uh, you set up some goals and you are informing your staff. But the people are what makes your vision come true. As a leader, you cannot be alone when you're doing things. You need your people to be with you, and it's challenging. So let's have a look at a few questions that you can ask yourself to make sure that you are taking care of your people. So the first question is, are your people competent enough? So do they have the right skills to do the job? Are you spending time training them, coaching them? So are they competent enough 
to help you achieve that vision. Another question is, are they working as a team? So are your people working together to help you achieve your vision? Or are they working just as individuals, not really helping each other or not really doing everything together towards a common goal? Another question that will really help you is, do you provide the right tools to your people for them to do a very good job? Let me give you an example. There was a hotel that I recently um, trained at and one of their, uh, I mean, part of their vision was to make their service like very, I mean, this was vision and mission together, but they wanted to uh, make their um, service very fast when people were checking in at the hotel. So not spending a lot of time with the check-in process because they wanted their receptionists um, and team members to spend as much time as possible with their hotel guests. So doing a fast check-in and then spending the rest of the time showing them around the hotel, showing them the facilities like the restaurants, at the spa, to give them, you know, like a tour of the place. Um, like if you are doing, like if you're welcoming guests at your house for the first time, you know, you give them a tour of the place, you make them feel comfortable. So that is what they wanted to do. However, this was almost never possible for their staff because their computers were very slow. Uh, probably sometimes they were not updating the system or some computers were a bit old. So instead of making the check-in process faster, they were making it much slower. As a result, the receptionists were getting, you know, like demotivated, discouraged. They always had to find excuses uh, when they were checking in guests. Also guests understood that, you know, there was something wrong and they were most of the time impatient. So think about the tools that you're providing to your people. Are they the right tools? Then another question is, are your people happy and motivated? So it doesn't mean nothing if, you know, they work in a nice place, they have the right tools, they're not happy at work, they're not motivated they will not be engaged in the workplace. They will not do anything possible to make the vision come true. Uh, and the last question is, do you provide enough support? So again, are you spending time having one-to-ones with them? Are you spending enough time coaching them, um, teaching them new things? So are you spending enough time with your people to make sure that they really are proud of working for your company. Now, we looked at vision and people. Let's go to the second part of today's webinar, which is pragmatic leadership. So what does it mean, pragmatic leadership? First of all, let's have a look at the definition of pragmatic. When somebody is pragmatic, it means that the decisions are guided by practical consideration rather than abstract principles. So being pragmatic means being practical rather than theoretical. But so what does this mean when it comes to leadership? Again, I'd like you to put your ideas in the chat. So what does it mean to be a pragmatic leader? I'd like you to put your ideas in the chat. I'll stop sharing so I can have a look at the chat. And I hope you were able to hear me. So think about what does it mean for you to be a pragmatic leader? So being a practical leader. Maybe I'll stop sharing. Otherwise you see like all of this thing on my screen. Okay, so I can see the first answers here. So I see make influence. I like this. Anybody else wants to give this a shot? What does it mean for you to be a pragmatic leader?
brilliant. I like this comment from Sylvia. So not just showing the way, but also the how. So how to do something. A leader who gets dirty first in the work. I like this. Couple more answers. Let's get a couple more ideas. So not following theories, do what has to be done. I like this. Being open-minded and authentic, brilliant. So I like this. Let me share my screen again to have a look. At the next slide. You should be able to see my screen again. So I like what you said. Some of you said knowing the how. Yes. So pragmatic leadership is a very uh, like broad uh, area and there are many ways that you can be a pragmatic leader. But let me give you a few ideas on what can you do to be more practical when it comes to your leadership style. So it's about understanding not just what to do so you have your vision you have your big ideas but also how to realize them so how to bring your vision uh, into reality and how to turn it into reality for your team so again i'll put a few questions up on the screen to help you out so we'll start with your vision your big ideas now, the next step would be to develop a strategy. So think about a strategy to start bringing this vision to life. Then setting goals. So you see a big word here in the middle of the screen, goals. I'm obsessed with goals because if you don't set goals, you can have all the big ideas, all the strategy that you want, but they have to be uh, like broken down into things that you can actually do, practical things that you can do, actions that will help you realize that vision. Then again, after you set goals, your job doesn't stop there. We are all good at setting goals, imagine personal goals, like uh, a bucket list of what you'd like to do in the next year. I'd like to sign up at the gym. I'd like to learn a new language, whatever it is. Uh, I'd like to travel at least twice a year. But then we sometimes reach some of the goals or we, we do something, but most of the time um, we never get to realize them. And it's because we don't design a plan we don't think of all the actions that we need to do or to take in order to realize those goals. So design a plan to realize your company or department's goal. And the last question, adjust your strategy if needed. So strategy can always be changed, can always be adjusted. This won't mean being a good leader won't mean that you will nail everything right away. It's impossible. And I know a lot of people that think this way. So they are so stubborn that they have a plan, a strategy, and doesn't matter like what happens, they will not change because they want to show everybody else that they are right, that they never make mistakes. This is not the point. If you see that your company or department is not going what it should be, don't wait until the end of the year or at the end of the two years, whatever it is to say, oh, we haven't made any progress. Oh, we are not where we want it to be. Well, if you're in a better place, that's very good. But if you aren't, you can always adjust your strategy to do what's best for your team and for the company or the department. Now, we touch on the first two points. Uh, the third point is the importance of explaining why. But before we touch on this third point, I think that it's time for a little break, a um, couple of minutes break. So I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll give some space to uh, Robin now. Yes, guys. So guys, it's time for a short break and we will be right back. 
so stay tuned guys Clarmatics is a full service video agency based around video production. We created a brand that fit our identity at the time, but as we've evolved as a company, we found that that original brand didn't quite fit our aspirations anymore. Finding a partner to rebrand your entire company takes a lot of time and effort. Finding Design Hill was an incredible lifeline. Design Hill offers a money back guarantee. If we don't like any of the designs, we get all of our money back. The stuff that we ended up with were well beyond what we had been seeing on other creative services platforms. After creating a simple design brief by answering some questions created by Design Hill, we posted and within a few days, we had over 250 entries. Design Hill's platform made it easy to communicate with all the potential designers. Eventually, we picked a winner. In addition to a logo, our designer also created a letterhead, business cards, and banners for all of our social media platforms. With Design Hill's help, we now have a brand that meets our aspirations. We're ready for the future and everything that it's here to bring. So, all right, guys, this, uh, we are back again. Let's continue with the session. Sarah, you can start presenting your screen again. Perfect. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you for the break. So, we just spoke about vision, which was the first topic, vision and people. So, uh, we saw the importance of having a vision for your company, for your department. Uh, then we saw that you uh, don't just have to have the big idea. You have to be able to turn it into reality. Uh, and also we saw the importance of um, having a good team of people around you that are uh, not just understanding your vision. They're really inspired by what you're saying. They really want to help you, the department, the company succeed. Uh, these are people that are really proud of the job that they do. Um, and it, this is not always easy to keep people so motivated, so engaged. So the third topic that we'll talk about is explaining uh, the benefits of, of explaining why to your team. Uh, and there are many ways, again, to uh, involve your people, uh, influence your people, persuade them to uh, come on this journey with you to reach that vision. Uh, but So we'll stop and look uh, at one of the ways that you can do that, which is explaining the why. Before I start sharing my screen again, there is another question for you, uh, because I'm loving all of your uh, input and all of your comments. And I think that um, everybody has a different idea of leadership. So all of your input and ideas are great. So I'd like you to put in the chat, what do you think are the benefits of explaining why? So the reason behind something, and it could be the reason behind like why something is important to you, why um, your team has to do a certain project or has to do a certain task, or why something is important for the entire team. So what is the benefit of explaining why to someone? So you can see the first answers coming up. People feel more involved. Yes, absolutely. Openness. I like this. What else do you think, guys, are the benefits of explaining why? And think that we are like children. So think of kids. Kids, they always ask why. Why the sky is blue? Why the grass is green? They ask why, 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 why? Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I uh, had this book that was called The uh, Thousands Wise. And this was for kids. Um, so there were like answers to a thousand questions that uh, kids normally ask. Uh, and this is because kids are asking all of these questions to learn, try and understand the world around them. And adults do the same. So we 
are as human beings we are curious we are born with curiosity so we try to understand everything that happens around us everything that happens in our day-to-day -day life so that's why it's very important for us to find meaning with understanding reasons so let's see what else is in the chat so i see why creates the justification to do something yes when aim is clear it's easy to achieve and they work accordingly and systematically i love this and i see myself blocked i'll see if ah oh, yeah i'm back again um it will help the team to work or to achieve absolutely 100 percent. thank you very much so i'll share my screen so i can share my presentation again Thank you very much for your input, guys. Perfect. So the importance of explaining why. There are so many benefits and all of the things that you said are absolutely right. So let me put a few others here in the chat. So one of them is clarity. You're painting a clear picture for your team of what they have to do. It's also easier for them to ask questions. So when they know why they're doing something, they will ask more questions. And the more questions they ask, the more will be clear why are they doing the work that they're doing, what they should be doing. And this really boosts communication. And communication, it's crucial, it's very important. And Unfortunately, this is the first thing that disappears uh, when people start to get busy at work or very stressed. We tend to not find the time to communicate properly. So taking the time to explain why will really boost communication. And as somebody said, will make people more open to come and talk to you, to communicate with you. The second point that I wanted to bring up is motivation. So that's another great benefit. You will drive engagement in your people. Uh, and we spoke about uh, having people engaged and motivated to follow you as a leader. So explaining why will really drive engagement because people will feel inspired, like they have a purpose. And they will also, um, by knowing the why, they will know also the difference that their work makes. Let me give you an example here. Um, so imagine that one of your team members has to do like an Excel spreadsheet or a report. So don't just say, look, you have to do this because we need it or because I've said so. This doesn't give them anything. Saying if I said so, this looks like very much like uh, a very like inexperienced person, what like an inexperienced leader would say. So it doesn't really help your team member to say, like, I said so. Um, also, it's because we need it doesn't really make them understand. But what if you say, like, look, the report that you do uh, every day really helps us uh, during our management meetings. So when we're meeting with all the other manager or with um, our senior executive, we use your report to uh, for our decision making for the company. So this really creates a shift for them. Wow, I take, yes, half an hour, an hour every day to make this report and maybe it's a bit boring, but look at how it helps the company. I'm important because I'm printing this report and preparing this report to make a difference in the company. Now, the third benefit is teamwork. So you will increase consistency and creativity and people will work much better together. Um, taking the time to explain why will show how everything that they do contributes to the success of the team, the success of the company. And um, they will be, they will see that they're working all together towards something in like, like a common goal, something in common. And also encourage them to help each other, to uh, collaborate with each other. Now, um, the fourth one is confidence. 
people will feel much more competent once they know the reason why they're doing something. Um, they're learning gradually. They're learning more and more. So when they will feel more competent because they know the why, they will feel more confident as well at work. And also they will understand how they can contribute to the company's overall success, the department success first and then the company. Um, and actually, I wanted to give you an example, and this probably falls more under teamwork. Um, imagine that I'm your boss and I'm asking you to work a few extra hours every day for a few weeks. Let's say that I say, like, look, uh, you have to do like a few more extra hours uh, every day for a couple of months. You probably will not be very happy because probably you're already working a lot. But what if I say, look, I'd like you to do a few extra hours and this will be for a few months. Yes, but one of your colleagues has just been diagnosed with cancer and the poor guy will have to spend a couple of months doing chemotherapy. So you will start, you will have a shift. You will feel completely different about my request. So this will make, you know, like people understand much better why they have to do something and something like this really uh, can strengthen the team. And the last part is productivity. So this will really drive accountability and people will procrastinate much less once they know why they're doing something. They will not waste their time, but try and work uh, in a really focused way. And then this will also encourage them to actively support and participate in new projects, for instance. So you won't have to say, spend time trying to convince them. Once they know the why, they will really uh, bring probably new ideas. They will be more engaged and much happier to participate. So now the last part of today's webinar, leadership, behavior, and its impact, which is the fourth and last point of today. So we spoke about vision, people, so how, what do you have to do, how to take care of your people. But I think that most of the impact that you uh, make on your organization, on your people, it's done by the example that you show, by your behavior. And somebody put in the chat that leader has to be a role model. Yes, because um, an organization climate, it's made 70% by leadership. 30% may be influenced by internal or external factors or people's motivation. But 70% is made by you as leaders. And this also influences the um, success of the company. So your behavior has an impact on many aspects of the company. Staff turnover, staff engagement, as we've seen, customer satisfaction, um, profit, revenue. So you have a direct impact on all of these things and where there is great leadership. If you are a great leader, you will see your people being more engaged, being more motivated and happy at work. You will also see um, higher customer loyalty. Your customers will be happier because your people are delivering better service. So you will see uh, more customers, increased customer loyalty. But you'll also see um, more income, better revenue and innovation going on in the company. So you really have to um, be a role model for your team to make sure that they look at you and they do, uh, they copy your behavior. Um, and negative behavior, it's very easy to copy. So you have to try and be a role model every day. So before we go on, um, the last points and what can you do to be a role model? I'd like to ask once again, what do you think you should do to be a role model for your team? You can pop that in the chat.
and I'll start to go and have a look. Okay, so I can see the first answers here. Do not order people to do things that the leader himself does not know or know how to do. That's a boss, not a leader. I like this. What else can you do to be a role model? There are many different things that you can do. Again, there is no right and wrong. It's what do you think a role model is to you think of previous managers leaders that you uh, admired uh, mentors that you had what did they do to be a role model to you and how would you like to be a role model for your team so you can see here communicate clearly i love that always show the good example absolutely be available and listen to them. I love this. Let's have a look at a couple more answers. Selflessness and integrity. I love this too. So brilliant answer as always, guys. Let me put a few more suggestions up on the screen for you. I'll share again. Perfect. So we just answered this question. What can you do to be a role model? So here are a few more suggestions. Be approachable even when you're busy. So your team has to be able to come and ask you for help, for support. Doesn't matter how busy you are. You always have to be approachable to them. You have to be focused on finding solutions rather than placing the blame. And this is very easy to um, to say when everything to say or sorry to do when everything is going very well. But imagine that one of your team members makes a mistake, and it's a big mistake. It's very you know like difficult to say. Oh, you know, don't worry. These things can happen. You're probably there, like, oh, why did you do this? So really, be focused on finding solutions rather than pointing the fingers. Your staff will mirror that, will take the example from you. Then have a positive attitude. Always have a positive attitude at work, which doesn't mean be always smiley, be always happy, even when everything is going wrong. But again, try to have a positive attitude to take everything in a positive way because your team will mirror that. Then be great with customers. So treat customers like they are VIPs be very patient with customers don't be oh you know like that annoying customer again what do they want now because your team will look at you and treat your customers the same way and last but not least be open to feedback so tell your team that you are not just open to feedback but you want their feedback and it's very um sometimes a bit awkward or uncomfortable uh, for people especially junior team members to give feedback to their boss they will always be intimidated so show them that it's okay to give you feedback that there are not going to be no uh, consequences or repercussions okay uh, and then the difficult part is don't be on the, don't go on the defensive mode so try to be open about their feedback accept their feedback take it at heart and then take action to uh, you know like do something after you've received the feedback from them so guys this was the end of the webinar i just wanted to uh, say a couple of last things um if you want to so leadership is of course like a massive uh, and broad topic uh, we couldn't cover everything in an hour but if you want to leverage your leadership skills there are other ways that i can help you so if you want any of these things or help translate your vision for your team drive and motivate your team more 
if you want to learn about delegation, how to train and coach your people, but also how to build trust and better rapport, get in touch with me. You've got my uh, website, email address, and phone number. I'm sure that Robin shared all of this uh, with you in the chat. So thank you very much. I think it's now time for the Q&A. Thank you very much. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Yes, Sarah. Thank you for this amazing presentation, Sarah. And now let's uh, quickly come to the questions tab. We still have 15 minutes to go. So guys, if you have anything to ask to Sarah, please put your questions in the questions tab and we will take up. So the first question is from uh, Piyush. He is asking, so let me put it on the screen. He's asking, my manager and leader of the company is the same person but he is not available most, most of the times because of his work priorities. This makes me unmotivated sometimes. How can I share my problem with him so that I can get his time? That's a great question. So I'll just minimize that so I can see everything. Um, that's a great question, Piyush, and it, that, that's something that I uh, mentioned. Sometimes leaders don't have time not because they're bad leaders, but because they are loaded with work. So a great idea could be to probably have a chat and tell your boss, like, look, I know you're very busy, uh, but I'd really like to um, share something with you, have a conversation with you, uh, or I need to have a one-to-one -one with you, let's say at least uh, once every two or three months or once a month. So when is a good time for you to have a meeting? Even a 10 minutes chat would be okay. Um, this really um, makes your boss think, okay, Piyush needs, needs some time for me. I will make some time. Um, and don't leave it up to him to choose uh, the time frame. Say like, look, next week or in a couple of weeks time, what day is it good for you? Uh, shall we do, I don't know, like Monday or Friday or try to nail down a date, but don't tell, don't tell your boss, let me know whenever you're free to have a chat because otherwise they'll never come back to you. So try to put down a date, say in the next couple of weeks, when can you have a chat with me? Um, and also if they are so busy with work, is there anything that you can take on board uh, so that they will be less busy? Is there anything any new responsibility, any new things that you can learn or you can help them with uh, so that they have a bit less work and a bit more time. So something to think about. I hope that answers your question. Great, Sarah. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for answering that question from Piyush. And I hope, Piyush, this answers your question. So the next question we have is from Anushka. Uh, she is asking, what if your leader is toxic? <laughs> yes. So I guess you have to define what, how is this person toxic, first of all, because there are many ways that a leader can be toxic. Um, and is that your direct leader? Uh, is that the CEO of the company? So. It really depends what you can do. It really depends on who is this person in your company. If it's the top, top manager and you, um, well, first of all, if it's a top, top manager, there is not much that you can do. Uh, if he's your direct, he or she is your direct manager, find another manager that you can trust at work. Find uh, another mentor, another person that can mentor you at work. Um, so it really depends on what kind of position do they um, have in the company. And sometimes I know that it's difficult to be motivated when you have a toxic leader and it's your direct manager. But a great advice that I can give you is if you love the job, if you love the company that you're working for, one person doesn't make the entire company. So uh, you can always you always have your team with you and you can also find the motivation yourself. I know this is very hard, but again, this is something uh, to consider. Wonderful, wonderful, Sarah. Thank you for answering that. So the next question we have is from Peter. He's asking, 
the question is someone who is motivated by money and you don't have how else can you motivate him or her that's a great question i um i get asked this a lot so uh, there is an entire leadership theory about motivation which i love uh and has been studied it's proven and has been going around for almost a century and there is no money involved in motivation so money doesn't really motivate us as human being um and of course when you work i mean there are many jobs that people do for free just because they love the job um but of course money is important so there must be a minimum um not a minimum but you must pay like a good wage to your people for doing the job that they're doing uh taking uh, in account their skills responsibility etc cetera, etc cetera. but then when the pay is good there is a good pay for the market um money doesn't increase motivation i can give you an example uh if you think about something that you don't like doing so one of the things for me is um i don't like ironing i hate it um and if somebody says i'll pay you to iron you know like a lot of clothes i'll i'll just I'll just pay you a lot of money. First of all, I think, okay, you're paying me money. This means there must be something wrong here. But also I um, I will not, I mean, you, you pay me to do that, but I will not like ironing after. And I will probably ask you for more money each time I have to do it. So money doesn't motivate us to do something. Doesn't make us like our job or doesn't make us like doing something. Um, so it, it's not you shouldn't use money as a motivator this means that the person has lost interest in the job so think about how can you make them feel more interested in the work that they're doing are they a person that worked for the company for a long time maybe they didn't learn anything new um, maybe they were supposed to have a promotion they didn't get it so just try to find what happened to them why did they lose interest in, in the job um and slowly you can work from there um do they need to learn new things do they need to be involved uh, in decision making a little bit more um consult them ask them for their opinion make them feel more important is it is it this what they're looking for to feel important to learn something new um to be you know interested again in the job so these are great ways to motivate people money shouldn't be taken into account That's a, that's a great answer, Sara. And I hope, Peter, this answers your question. The next question we have is from Daniela. Uh, she's asking how self-motivation is important for leaders. I think it's crucial, Daniela. Thank you for asking this question. Because the more you go at the top, the less you will find a boss that sits with you and motivates you so usually if you start as a team member you have your supervisors or your manager depending on how big the company is but you have people that their where their job is to motivate you because they are your your manager but as you go up uh, you become a leader yourself you're expected to be uh, self-motivated uh, and probably your boss if it's you know like Vice President of the company, CEO. So the higher the position you have, the more like the busier your boss will be. They won't probably have the time to sit down with you and motivate you. So you will have to find your own motivation. What do you love about this job? What do you love about the company? Um, what changes do you want to bring to the company? Um, having setting up your own challenges, your own goals. You like it's Self-motivation is really, really important when you're a leader. Wonderful, Sara. And thank you so much uh, for answering this. And I guess uh, we are done with the Q&A. We know we don't have any more questions. Brilliant. So yes, we can wrap up this webinar now. Yes. I uh, just wanted to say a couple of last words. I'll right, right. Back. Sure.
um there you go the chat is here so i just wanted to say thanks everyone i think that um robin if you can share this again uh, there is a link with a feedback form so if you want some extra uh, material bonus material bonus tips from me you can receive them a hundred percent for free via email uh, and robin will share the feedback form for you now um if you'd be so kind to give me a little bit of feedback then at the end you have the part where you can um subscribe for my free tips and free extra material so uh this would be very very beneficial not just for me but also for you uh, because this will improve future events uh, and webinars but also the content that i deliver because uh, i want to nail the content for you so also feel free to reach out to me whenever you need it if you need to go deeper on anything of this topic i will be very happy to help you out with that so linkedin via email via phone wherever you prefer and i see somebody that says what's our instagram name i'm so i'm i'm not on instagram um i mean i am but i only have my personal account uh but you can look out for me on linkedin you have my name but i'll put it here and Robin has already shared uh, my LinkedIn profile, so I'm on LinkedIn, so you can reach out to me. Guys, um, that, don't have we have shared there. the link and I'm sharing that again I will be very on the tag happy section. To be in touch with you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Robin. So guys, we have shared the link again on the chat section. So don't forget to follow Sarah on LinkedIn and don't forget to check out the website of Sarah. She has some amazing content on leadership. And you can also book a session with Sarah. Uh, so we have shared the contact information. We will share that again on the chat section. So all right, guys, this brings us to the end of this wonderful workshop with Sarah. This was indeed a value packed session. Although there is a lot more that we could have learned. Unfortunately, we are limited by time here. I hope you guys love this session. Once again, I would like to thank you, Sarah, for taking out time to be a part of this event. And guys, this is not where it ends. We have a lot more events lined up for you. So don't forget to check out our events page and to watch this session and other such wonderful sessions, subscribe to our official YouTube channel. And for all the designers and uh, other such wonderful uh, and uh, who are wish to be a part of thriving design community, visit designhill.com. On that note, I would like to say bye to everyone who joined us here today. Take care, guys, and stay safe. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Robin. Take care.